Here's an idea. We will embrace our new robot overlords. In case you haven't heard the news, we're teaching computers how to think. From playing chess to identifying pictures of cats, this broad set of programs, known as artificial intelligence, or AI for short, is getting more and more useful for everyday applications. With some AIs able to outperform humans on certain tasks, a lot of people are excited about the possibilities of improving humanity. Google's assistant can call to make hair appointments and dinner reservations, and digital doctors can read MRI scans more accurately than fleshy mortals. If computers do all the work, we can just relax. That's the best case scenario. But a lot of people are worried. The idea that AI could, or definitely will, take over has been gaining traction over time as technology has become more capable and lifelike. Fictional robots have been taking over for decades, from iRobot's Machine, to Ultron, to the Terminator Skynet, to me, right here, right now. Traditionally, the AI overlords are depicted as evil despots, forcing the few remaining human rebels into hiding. But we're not even close to that yet. No AI has successfully emulated human intelligence or even shown true autonomy. The best ones can only outperform humans in very narrow, well-defined situations, like playing Jeopardy or opening doors, not complex conversation or organizing a coup d'etat. Still, AI has made a lot of progress in the last few decades, and if it continues at its current pace, AI could soon make the jump into more traditionally human activities, like ruling governments. This is what has people worried, links in the doobly-doo. But we want to focus on a different aspect of the AI takeover. How could it actually happen? After all, Siri can't exactly run for office, and Cortana can't hold a pen, and Bigsby can just be unplugged, but then your food would get warm. But people are pretty killable too. So to really understand how an AI could take over, we first need to think about what a takeover actually means. 17th century philosopher and Bill Bailey lookalike Thomas Hobbes has our back here with some basic theory. Because of the English Civil War, Hobbes got it in his head that there exists a state of nature, a position with no government, no laws, no schools, no cities. Instead of groups, everyone is a rational, self-interested individual, and so everyone kind of wants to kill each other over stuff. There are no laws to punish those people, so only the people who can stand up and use force to retaliate can defend themselves. Life in this state of nature has been described by Hobbes as nasty, poor, brutish, and short. Now, to be clear, Hobbes was by and large wrong about human nature, but his ideas were still influential and useful, so let's assume for a second that the state of nature is one, useful, and two, really bad to live in. Hobbes points out that people can avoid violence by making agreements with each other. However, the agreement is only as strong as the enforcement, so only people with power can really make and keep agreements with each other. The only way, Hobbes argues, to get order out of the state of nature is if every person in the group makes an agreement with every other person in the group to relinquish their power to some higher person or authority, an authority he called the Leviathan. This Leviathan has the power to make laws and enforce punishments for breaking them, allowing it to establish certain rules for civil society. People willingly surrender their liberty to the Leviathan because the state of nature is really, really terrible. Making and enforcing laws is something a computer could be really good at, once it's trained on what humans consider good and bad. Every human politician has some amount of bias because they have a personal life that they need to attend to. A computer would have no bias and could fully focus on the good of the state and its citizens because it has no personal life. It's just a program. An AI acting purely in favor of a nation won't alter the economy to support itself or take action against other nations because of a grudge. It can be rational at all times in that it has its priorities stable and it will act to maximize those goals. And there may be other benefits too. With any human-run government, power needs to be spread out or delegated because a single person can't hear every legal case or make decisions in all areas of expertise. But an AI can handle massive amounts of information and process it very quickly. That's how Watson was able to read hundreds of thousands of documents to answer Jeopardy questions in three seconds. So a machine, pure and simple, could be a better ruler than any human. And this is one way AI might take over. People see the consistency and efficiency and allow it to rule based on those principles. But picking a government based on practicality isn't always guaranteed. People tend to vote for charisma over pure ability. Another way 
that AI could take over is through convenience. Given the choice between a small task and something that requires a lot of time and effort, most people will choose the smaller task. It just makes sense, we'll have more time to relax and enjoy life. Unfortunately, that's kind of the opposite of what happens. We end up doing more and more tasks and having less time for ourselves. In his essay, A Tyranny of Convenience, Tim Wu argues that we'll choose the more convenient option even if the other options are more nutritious or beneficial or more in line with our values. Technology has undoubtedly made our lives easier over the past century, but it has also made us more susceptible to the allure of convenience. With on-demand entertainment at your fingertips, it's hard to find time to read a book. And when food can be delivered to your door, it doesn't make sense to cook your own meals. This desire for convenience doesn't just apply to our personal lives. People are willing to sacrifice liberty for convenience. Take for example the recent CIA leaks that showed they were able to spy on regular people over the internet. And they weren't forced to stop because of protests or citizen outrage, but because the companies patched the exploits. Convenience won over privacy. Nowadays, a lot of companies aren't competing to sell you a product exactly, just for your attention. By auto-playing videos or suggesting other videos you might like, YouTube is able to keep you watching just because it's more convenient than going to do something else. AI is already becoming ubiquitous online, often used to determine what gets suggested. It pulls from massive data sets that you help create just by browsing. We've already submitted our privacy in exchange for optimized feeds. But we're talking about trivial tasks. Does the tyranny of convenience really apply to AI designed to govern? Well, yes. The Leviathan exists not just to get us out of the state of nature, but also to allow us to live contentedly. And convenience is a major part of that. With any normal government, at least some people need to be actively involved in governing, making the decisions and putting in the time. AI may be efficient at governing, but if it's convenient, it will have a place there. Perhaps what's most interesting is people are aware of what's behind these feeds. There's a lot of talk of the algorithm, the tangible force responsible for our digital lives, and it has the same respect and awe that's often given to a god. And this reverence for AI is what will allow it to gain more power. We already respect it and enjoy the convenience it brings, and when it's able to do more and more things, it will become the go-to choice. Even with the ability to opt out with laws like GDPR, we're still giving it the info it needs. What's more, the confidence we have in AI applies to more than just its narrow area of expertise. As we see AI complete simpler tasks, we're more confident giving it complex jobs like driving or answering phone calls. As this affects snowballs, it's only a matter of time before an AI is in control of a nation. So it's not just that we will embrace our AI overlords. We already have. So what do you guys think? Have you embraced our AI overlords? Or will you fight against the computers? Let us know in the comments. Everyone you see here in the credits is just a volunteer doing this in their free time. We are Idea Project, an open source, community-driven YouTube show about society and culture, thinking in a little more critical way than your average message board. We have a subreddit and Twitter for non-video stuff from us, and if you want to drop by and say hello, help out, criticize, whatever, we have a Discord where most of the work happens. Links are, as always, in the description.